Who's ready to get spooky? Tyler's really kicking my butt here with the proliferation of the movie reviews, so it's time to get back on the board. What's happening, everybody? Justin, Library Chess Productions, coming at you with another movie review, this time reviewing Michael Melsky's The Child Remains. If you haven't heard of Michael Melsky or The Child Remains, I can't blame you. That's because this is a low-budget, Nova Scotia-produced horror movie, Nova Scotia for the uninitiated, that's where Tyler and I live. So as I mentioned, The Child Remains is a suspense horror movie starring, and I have to refer to my notes because it's actors that you aren't likely to have heard of before unless you're, you know, fluent in the Canadian film industry. Uh, Suzanne Clement, she's actually kind of uh, Quebecois, French-Canadian, like acting royalty, basically. But you may know her from a couple of different TV series, miniseries, uh, Versailles, as well as The Forest. Alan Hocko, who you may know best as Jack Doyle, lead character of the CBC series Republic of Doyle. Shelley Thompson, who you would probably know best from Trailer Park Boys as Mr. Leahy's wife, Barb Leahy. And something of a genre legend here, Giza Kovacs, and I believe I'm pronouncing that name correctly, probably know him best from work in the 80s. You're looking at movies like Scanners and uh, The Dead Zone. The Child Remains focuses on a couple who are just taking a vacation, just sort of taking time away from their lives. The wife is an ex-journalist. She suffers from PTSD. She is also pregnant. The husband is a struggling musician. So they take a vacation at a secluded inn, which is run by the daughter of the former proprietress of the inn. Now, the inn used to be a maternity home. She was a bit, you know, philanthropic. She would take in girls, unwed mothers... So it was a maternity home who she then turned around and adopted out the children. As the weekend passes, paranormal phenomena expose the inn for what it really is. So again, like I said, this movie was filmed basically entirely in Nova Scotia. It is based off of, or rather inspired by, I suppose, some events that actually did happen in Nova Scotia, a pretty dark chapter of Nova Scotia's history. But based on the fact that it is filmed in Nova Scotia, I always make it a priority, and I actually make it a point of pride that whenever I have the opportunity to support local, I do support local as much as I possibly can. Plus, I mean, this movie was made literally for $875,000, Canadian dollars. What can 875,000 Canadian dollars buy you? A not very good horror movie. Maybe that can be considered unkind. Look, there's nothing about this movie that is remarkable. There's nothing about it that stands out at all. It's a really, really poor script. And look, with good performances, you can polish a turd and almost make it look like a diamond. As far as I'm concerned, the vast majority of this script is a bit of a turd. Michael Melsky, who directed it, was also the screenwriter. This is not a good screenplay. It's not a good script. And the performances, by and large, are not good enough to save that. Also, with all due sensitivity to the fact that it is inspired by events that are part of our history, this is a weak story. And it kind of goes to show just how much inspired by true events can get away with. What I mean by that is the story of The Child Remains, or the backstory, is inspired by the story of the Butterbox Babies. This is going to kind of get into some dark territory, but again, it's kind of part of our history. We kind of have to own it. The Butterbox Babies, or the story of the Butterbox Babies, comes from the ideal maternity home from East Chester, Nova Scotia. Back between the 20s and 40s, the ideal maternity home would unfortunately take children who were not... Uh, resellable or not sellable or not adoptable or however you want to pronounce it, these children, if they had some kind of deformity or anything like that, they would bury them alive, uh, they would starve them, or they would throw them into the ocean. It's scary that it was something that was really happening, but it was something that was really happening. And by the way, I'm not against taking things that really happened, like horrifying things that really happened. I'm not against taking those things and turning them into fiction. I'm, I'm not against that. Not at all. And it doesn't even really have to be done in a respectable way. But I do appreciate it when it's done in a good way. And look, $875,000, I get it. It doesn't buy you very much in terms of production design, the way a movie's shot, the way it looks, even the way it's performed. But 
again, there's nothing remarkable about this movie. Let's even ratchet the bar down lower. There's nothing really noteworthy about this movie. In a genre that is, like, noteworthy for mundanity. Like, there's a lot of mundane, middle-of-the-road, really not saying or doing anything interesting in the horror genre. It happens all the time. We see laziness and mundanity and averageness in the horror genre. It's there all the time. And when you have an opportunity, no matter your budget, to do something a little bit different or do something noteworthy or... Again, it doesn't have to be pricey in order to be good or interesting or something unique. This movie, I don't see it from this movie. It doesn't stretch the box any. It doesn't move the dial. There's not a blip on the radar. And yet, at the end of the day, I'm going to be generous to it. Should you see The Child Remains? Eh. Let me be honest about this movie. This movie deserves a maybe if it's free. It's not bad enough to get a, this is just shutter, but it deserves a maybe if it's free, but I can't do that to the Nova Scotia film industry. And I full well admit this movie, The Child Remains, as well as another production that was kind of going on at the time, was a victim of how horribly the Nova Scotia film industry was mismanaged politically by our provincial government. This is like the poster child for the victim of this movie because this movie could very well have been, you know, $300,000 more expensive. And with that, you could have done some different things. You could have maybe moved to some different locations. You could have done other things that would have opened more doors. And I think this would have been a better movie. Unfortunately, this was a victim of that. It cost this movie about $300,000, which is about 30% of its production budget. And the result was it's not the movie that it could have been. If you have the opportunity to pay to see this movie, please do, because that helps our film industry. Just don't go into this movie expecting it to be good, because it's it's not. I think, by and large, Shelley Thompson, who plays the proprietor of the inn, is probably the best part of this movie. I think her performance borders on being pretty darn good. It's just too much about this movie that was poorly done to give it anything better than what I gave it, and I'm being pretty darn generous by giving it that middle-of-the-road ranking. All right, folks, that's going to do it for another Library Chess Productions movie review. Have you seen The Child Remains? What did you think of it? If you have, let us know in the comments below. That's it for me, Justin, Library Chess Productions movie reviews. We'll see you again next time, and we'll see you at the movies.